Hi, this is Tim. Today I'm going to tell you about an exciting new feature of our SIM IPE. You can now connect to a network switch and discover the IP addresses that are out on that network. If you're like me, you end up at a lot of different job sites where you don't necessarily know the IP addresses on the network. Now I can tell the IP addresses of these EMBTs up here, but that doesn't help me on devices that don't have LCD displays or any way to show their IP addresses. Using the read unknown feature, we can plug into a spare port on the ethernet switch. It's discovered 24 devices. So our, this, the first thing we learn is that it looks like this network is 192.168.1.1. All right, and this first device is gonna give us the MAC address. This is a 1756EN2T. Also tells us the version of it and the serial number of it. And we can use the up arrow to go to the next device. Also, while we've been talking, it discovered a 25th device. So this one is a 1769L24ER QBF. So this is a compact Logix PLC. Um, and it is RS Logix 5000 version 24. There's its serial number and its Mac. All right, and now we have, uh, this is a Hardy 4000. This is a Hardy scale, and its IP address is 192.168.177. All right, and I'm not real familiar with this device, so this is kind of neat. This is on IP 192.168.155. And it's an IND560 ETH IP. So, this is probably some Ethernet IP adapter for some type of device, but it tells us its version and its serial number. There's another one of them. Oh, we got several of those. All right, now we have a PowerFlex 525 drive on 192.168.115. Also, while we've been doing this, it discovered a 26 device, 27 devices. Uh, and it tells the version and the serial number of it. Uh, there's another one of those IND 560s. Uh, there's another Hardy scale, another Hardy scale. Uh, this is another type of compact Logix PLC. It's a 1769L23, and we see that it's version 19, which is an RS Logix 5000 version. Uh, there's another L23, uh, another L23. Okay, and then we have on 192.168.120, we have a 1794AENT. That's a Flex IO module, and it gives its version and serial number. Another L23. Uh, there's a paint. All right, there's a Panel View Plus on 192.168.13, and there's another Panel View Plus. Another Panel View Plus. All right, we have several Panel View Pluses. There's a 1756EMBT. All right, and now sometimes devices won't give you their information. So chances are this could be a computer. I'm not really sure what this is, but on 192.168.160, we have this MAC address. And there's another one, and another one, and another one. And then apparently there is a device out there that either doesn't have an IP address assigned to it yet, or it just isn't giving up its IP address. Now in this case, there's actually a second ethernet switch here um, that probably leads to another network. So I'm gonna unplug from it and we'll just go out of read unknown. We're gonna plug into it and now we'll do a read unknown on it. All right, so it says nothing so far. All right, so we give it a little bit of time and all right, it starts discovering them. So now we've discovered six devices. All right, so this network is 192.168.11, and that's the important part when you're trying to connect a network is to know those first three octets. So on 39, we have a 1756EN2T. Uh, there's another EN2T. Okay, and here's a device that gives its IP address in MAC, but doesn't give what it is. There's another 1769L23 Compact Logix, uh, another Compact Logix. Okay, and this device here is just going to give us its IP address. Another one just giving its IP address. Also from this screen, let's say we needed to replace this 1769L23E. We can add it to our target IP address simply by pressing the OK button. And that way, once we go out of here and we're going to assign an IP address, actually first we prepare it, 
and we go to our IP address list where we can select what we're going to assign to our new device. You see it's right there. This is another feature that was developed with the help of feedback from you. Uh, originally, the SIM IPE was only designed to plug into a single device. And we found some people were plugging it into network switches and it would quickly ramble off a bunch of information about what it saw on the network. We kept getting requests asking us to slow down the information that was on the display. And we never actually thought about plugging it into an ethernet switch. But it became such a popular undocumented feature that we were glad we could improve upon it and make it a supported feature. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.